So we have a kind of working thing here that only does one thing with one user who is fake. Let's make it so that we can have more than one fake user. So we can sign in and sign out. We'll have a sign in component. We'll only show the sign in component if we're not already signed in. If we are signed in, we will of course show main. So we'll do that. We'll not worry about the fact that we have no actual system for checking your passwords and all that jazz. We'll just make it so you type in an email address and you log in and that's that. So let's get started in that direction. So we need a sign-in component. Let's add one. Yay, another new component. Capital S, sign, capital I, N, dot JS. Now, this is going to have a form on it, so I know right off the bat it's going to be a class. So import React and component from React. Class sign in extends component. We need a render method that returns some stuff. I still need to export default sign in. So I'll return some JSX, probably something with a class of sign in here. And I don't know what else I need in here, but I'll at least put a form. Don't need an action on it. Form with an input, type of text, name of email, And you know what? Uh, I bet there's a type of email in HTML5 too. There is. So that'll get you some automatic uh, client-side validation there on most browsers. Kind of nice. We'll put a placeholder in there, placeholder uh, email. May as well auto capital F focus it. Why not? And let's add a button. We'll make it a submit type button. Lovely form. How do we get to it? Uh, so we want it to show only if we're not already signed in. How do we know if we're signed in? Well, app.js has this user object up here, right? So I think if that user's there, we're signed in. If it's not, we're not. So how about we not start signed in? Let's just make this initialize state.user to an empty object. So we're no longer a user. So app needs to decide, okay, if there is a user, show me main. If there's not, show me sign in. So let's import sign in from dot slash sign in. So how do I know if I'm signed in? How about we check whether, who did it? Who made this work? Uh, what'd you do, Jacob Shopmeyer, um. the third <laughs> and a half? No. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, if it has a uh, if it has a length of zero, by the way, it is actually falsy on its own. So let's say um, if we do not not empty string, we get false. So empty string is also false. So you could probably just say whatever if username. That would work. So. My user's going to have a username and email. I don't know what else. It's going to have some stuff. 
and I wanted it to have a UID on there too, a user ID. So I think what I'm going to do is check whether there's a user ID. So I'm just going to write a method that does that checking for me. We can worry about the implementation later, and, and it could always change. But I'll at least make a method that's just called signed in. I'll make it an arrow function. And I think I'm just going to return this.state dot user dot UID. So if that's undefined, I'm not signed in. If it is defined, I'm signed in. So I want to check that. And if it's there, I want to render main. Otherwise, I want to render sign in. I don't know what's up with my uh, syntax highlighting. So how can we do that? It'd be cool. Don't type along with this. It does not work. But it'd be cool if I could just say, like, if this dot signed in. main else sign in. But we can see it's complaining expression expected. If I save this, whole universe explodes. Unexpected token, it doesn't like the if. Can't use an if in JSX like this. If statements are not expressions, and we need an expression that actually returns something, uh, uh, were you saying something? Okay, so you can have another function with an if in it that returns this JSX, and then call that function from inside here. That totally works. There's several ways you could do it. Um, that's a pretty good way. Um, while if statements are not expressions, ternaries are. You know what ternaries are? You know what a ternary statement is? It's like, a, it's like an inline if. So you put your condition, three is less than five. There you go. So you put your condition, three is less than five, then a question mark, then the thing that it should return if it's true, then a colon, then the thing if it's false. So, yay, seven less than five, aw, oh, cuss. Get it? So, Boolean expression, question mark, thing if it's true, colon, thing if it's false. So I could say, this dot signed in, Question mark, uh, main, uh, did anybody remember what props I passed in there? Uh, user, user this dot state dot user, was that it? Yes. Okay, cool. Else, sign in. So now if we are signed in, we see main, if we're not, you see the sign in thing. Uh, I like this. It's nice and brief. And if you indent it like this, if you put it on multiple lines, I think it scans very quickly once you get used to it. Once you get used to this is a this is a way to do conditional rendering. So render one thing in one case, render another in another. Several ways to do it. I like this way. In a lot of cases. Mm-hmm. So render is called every time state or props change. So like, so like in message form, uh, yeah, because we have a our handle change, right? So yes, we're setting state every time. So yes, it re-renders after every key press. And then, and remember, it only changes the parts that should actually change. So it's not redrawing the whole dang component. Just whatever elements actually need to. And it all does happen really, really fast.
Cool. So what are we seeing now? I'm seeing sign in. If I go in my React DevTools, here's my app component. I've got that as dollar sign $R. If I say dollar sign $R dot set state, user is, uh, what was I checking? UID, yeah. Uh, give it a UID of anything. Immediately, I get main again. So now if there is a user in state, I see main. If there's not, I see the sign-in page. So that's kind of cool. Now I just want the form to be able to change that. So the form needs to be able to change the user in the state of app component. But only one component under the sun is allowed to change the state of app component. And that component is, Kyle, what do you think? No. Did you hear the question? What's, if I want to change the state of the app component, what component's allowed to do that? If I want to change state in app. Only app. App's the only one that's allowed to change its own state, right? But we want to do it from sign in. Well, tough, I guess. Let's just write a method to do it here. Uh, I'm going to call it handle auth, which may seem like a clunky name at this point, but it's because I know what we're going to change it to later. Handle auth. So this is going to handle authentication. And all it's going to do right now is this dot set state. And it's going to say user to some object that has a UID. Doesn't matter what it is. And sure, we'll stick a username. And an email. Steven at woe.org. Cool. That's all handle auth is going to do. Now we're on the sign in page. My React Dev Tools, I select app, so now I have dollar sign R in the console. I call dollar sign R dot handle auth. There I am. So how would I make a sign out method? What would that do? Just set just set uh, the user back to an empty object. This dot set state user is an empty object. Just take the user out of state. Let's try that. So I have my app component selected. So dollar sign R is the app component. Dollar sign R dot handle auth. I'm logged in. Dollar sign R dot sign out. I'm not. Sign in. Sign out. Sign in. Sign out. It's pretty cool. Sign out seems pretty easy. Let's make it work. How should it work? Click in this thing. That's our sign out button. But gosh darn it, sign out lives all the way in app component. Give up? No. If I have a function that I want to call from a component and that, comp that function lives elsewhere, how do I get it in there? How do I get anything from outside a component into a component? Props, every time. So great, I only have about 10 components to jump through to get to the sign out button. So here's main. It's got user. Let's add sign out equals this dot sign out, right? It's a method on the app component. 
open up main. Now that's coming in as a prop. And it goes to the sidebar, right? So I need to add a prop to sidebar called sign out. And what does it equal? This dot props dot sign out. Does that make sense to everyone? In app, it's just this dot sign out because it's defined right here. It's a method of the current component. Inside main, that's coming in as a prop. And it's a class, so the props are available as this dot props. So this dot props dot sign out gets passed into sidebar as a prop. Inside sidebar, I have my list of props here. Uh, what other props do I have? I have user. So I could always destructure those. User, comma, sign out. So I could change this from props.user to just user. And then what about sign out? I believe it goes to user info as well, doesn't it? That's where the sign out button is. So sign out equals what? Not Terry? Just sign out, right? Because I already ripped it out of the props. So inside user info, it's coming in as a prop now, so I'll destructure it, sign out. I pass it into my sign out component at long last. Add a prop called sign out, set it equal to sign out from right here. And finally, in my sign out component, it's not getting any props yet. So I'll add that up here. Here's my button. I'll add on click equal sign out. Holy crap. Yeah. A little louder. So, so in a class, we would use this dot props, and in one of these, we would use props as long as we actually put props in the argument list up here. But even that wasn't there in this component yet because we hadn't, we didn't have any other props. So yeah, you could put props there. You could put this there. Let's see if it works. So we're signed out now, right? Get my React Dev Tools, Git app. It's dollar sign $R. So dollar sign $R dot handle auth will log us in. And now clicking the button should log us out. And it does. So I'm testing this a little bit of the time in the console so I don't go to all the trouble of making the form work, only discover that something doesn't work and it was something I did like 10 steps ago. So I know my handle auth function works. I know my sign out function works. I know my sign out button works. Now we just need to make the sign in form work. How hard can it be? So remind me who did it, who did the homework, all the homework. All right, what do you say? Uh, what do I need to do this form? Uh, so basically do the same thing we did with the other form to manage the value of this. Uh, of this input with state. So we'll need some state in here. So state equal, could put in a constructor, may not need to. So state, um, I'll put email, maybe. Uh, and it's a, just a string. So then I could put value equal this dot state dot email. So now it's a controlled form and I can't type in it right because it's always going, the value of that input is always going to be what's in state. So I need to make sure that state actually changes when I type in it. So I'll add another method called handle change. I'll make it an arrow function, of course. It'll need to receive an event and it will update state 
It'll change the email to event.target.value, so whatever was typed in there. So on the input, I need on change equals this dot handle change, right? Now I can type in it, and if I look at my React Dev Tools, let's look at the signing component. Here's my state, email is empty, start typing, and email gets whatever I type. So far, so good. Now we just need something to happen if we submit. It's a lot of method called handle submit. I suppose we'll prevent default. On our form, we need to add the on submit prop and have it call this dot handle submit. And uh, what's it actually going to do? It needs to call handle auth, right? But handle auth is up in main, because that's the thing that actually logs us in. It actually sets a user in state. So we need to be able to call that from sign in, which means we need to pass it as a prop to sign in, right? Everybody follow that? Everybody get this by now? Passing around functions as props. So handle auth equals this dot handle auth. So down here, I could call uh, this dot props dot handle auth. And let's see what happens. Oh, it needs to be an email address. And I'm signed in. But I'm still signed in to see Steven every time, right? I can sign out. I can type in an email address. So it does change the view, but I'm the same user every time. So that user should probably not be hard coded in uh, handle auth, should it? It should probably be passed in as an argument. Like that. Whatever user happens to be passed in, we'll add it to state. This is the same, of course, as typing this. So from sign in, when we call handle auth, we need to pass in a user at that time. So for right now, I'll just make up a UID, because that has to be there, because that's how we're determining whether you're signed in. Username and email. So email is this.state.email, right? Uh, for right now, for lack of a better option, I'll put this.state.email here too. Just so we'll have a username. Let's see how it goes. Sign in as a at a.com. There I am. If I say something, it goes in as a dot, a at a.com. I sign out. I log in as b at a.com. Now I'm b at a.com. If I say something, it goes in as that person. Of course, the other chat messages are gone. Main got unloaded and our state went away. But by golly, we can kind of sign in as different users. It's all fake, right? There are no passwords or anything. But by golly, the user object in state changes. So we can get different avatars and everything here. This feels like a pretty major step. So we've got the authentication workflow at least working, even though there's no actual authentication mechanism. This is, this is big. This is good. Add sign in component and auth workflow. So questions about all that? <laughs>